Hi, this is just going to be a quick look at the input process output model, the IPO model, and it's an abstract way of describing the structure of a system or algorithm. And it's actually used not only in computer science, but in various completely separate disciplines like manufacturing and management and so on. And there are three basic components of it, uh, no prizes for getting what they are. So you have the input aspect of your process, and then you have the output. So they're connected in this order. So you have some input, you then process the input and produce an output. And it's abstract because it's leaving out all the implementational details. We're not that concerned about what's actually happening at each stage, it's just the effect that matters to us. And this could be a computer system, it could be a piece of software, it could be an actual algorithm within some software. So it doesn't actually matter, that's why it's abstract. So as I say, take some input, process it and produce some output. And the key to understanding this is that it can represent a whole system like a factory or a phone, or it can represent a single aspect of a system like a button on an app that does a very specific process. The amount of actual process that goes on isn't that relevant. And you can think of it as the complete system having loads of these chained together. So the output passes to another input for another device or another algorithm. An important consequence is that if this is kind of forming a larger system, like you've got loads of IPOs connected together, then if you standardise your input and output, for example if the input is some text and the output is a video, I'm not sure why you'd have that, but if you standardise it, the actual process doesn't matter so much because it's, if you, unless you change the format of the output, it's not going to affect the next input all that matters really is the input and the output. The actual process, the actual implementation in the process bit doesn't matter so much. You can change it and hide it from the wider system. So this is the basic model but if it does get extended there are two things that are usually added. A feedback loop going from the output back into the input and also just a storage or an aspect of storage which is um, back and forth between the process bit. So if you get asked to draw an IPO model don't add this stuff on unless it is clear that they want you to in an exam. So the, the storage might be used as a cache. A cache is a very fast bit of storage that is used to store frequently accessed instructions so it will speed up processing time if the same thing is being done constantly. It makes more sense to use some storage that maybe contains previously calculated results and the feedback loop can represent an output from one process being inputted again to the same process maybe in recursion or if this is another process like you know I said a chain of processes this can represent that as well so recursion is where it kind of runs itself on the data it's using repeatedly until it reaches a base case but not something you need to worry about too much but this can signal just repeating the same process again or inputting to another process